Hello and welcome to the big picture. The UPA government seems to be on the horns of a dilemma. Having failed to get some crucial legislations passed in the last parliament session, which incidentally was the last session of the 15th Lok Sabha, it is contemplating the ordinance route for at least some of them. However, it seems to be facing both legal and political hurdles in getting them passed. The union cabinet which was expected to clear some of these legislations today to be promulgated as ordinances were deferred. While questions are being raised about the ethicality of promulgating ordinances during its last days in power, UPA government is also under pressure from various groups to go ahead with it. Today we will discuss the ethical, legal and political issues involved in taking the ordinance route and whether it can be justified or it should be put off for the new government. To discuss this I have with me Prakash Javdekar, National Spokesperson of the BJP, Salman Sos, Congress Spokesperson, Tapan Sen, CPIM MP in the Raj Sabha, Anjali Bardwaj, Secretary of the National Campaign for People's Right to Information and Vinod Sharma, Political Editor of Hindustan Times. Welcome to all of you. Mr. Javdekar, I would like to come to you first. Do you, would your party have any objections if the, if the government goes ahead and issues, promulgates some of these ordinances at least? This is our demand and we are asking now government why it did not bring it for nine years. And second, last three sessions were wasted by their Congress own MPs. So, Congress needs to explain why their MPs made such uh, nasty scenes, why they didn't allow House to function, and why Congress could not ring them in. Now, you can't have cake and eat it too. You will disturb the House, and now you will want to create an image that you will, uh, you are something really against corruption. If you would have real intention of fighting against corruption, then you would not have done 2G in first place, not allowed CWG, you would have allowed Sunil Dutta to be there, you would not have, you send the whistleblowers, three MPs into jail, court has said reinvestigate, you are not reinvestigating. So laws in words is one thing, laws enforcement, with real political will is another thing which is completely absent in the Congress. You have not answered my question, Mr. Dowd. I answered your question. Are you? Will you not have a problem if they issue promulgate ordinances? No, why we shall? You should not. You will, you will not have a problem. problem. You will not have a problem. No, why we will have a problem? Okay, uh, Tapan Sen, you yes. think you think the government would be justified in promulgating some of these ordinances which they are planning to? Ordinance is never a preferred route for in a, in a democratic political system. It is never a preferred route. It should have been passed in the, uh, in the parliament. There were ample opportunities and ample time left. Three session was spoiled because of the ruling party's own problem. And that's why they have landed in that kind of a situation. Now, even at all some ordinance are issued by them that was under compulsion of a situation that reflects their failure to get it passed in the parliament. And if something has come as ordinance, some of the legislation which are important, which we are also supporting. But the thing is that in ordinance route, there are many issues which parliament should have intervened to make those bill in proper order. There are certain amendments are required. Those will not be there if that is goes through the ordinance. Right. So ordinance practically make a particular pattern of the bill a fait accompli. So that way it is never a preferred route. And now if at all some ordinance might have come on certain important okay. urgent issues that reflect the failure of the ruling, uh, ruling party, the governance itself. Salman Sos, does it reflect the failure of the government in getting this bills passed some of them which have been pending for several years in fact you know they have not been able to get the bill passed and now this last minute attempt to get it passed through the ordinance route which is which is really not uh, you know in term in ethical terms in the, when when the government is in the last days of its uh, in, in power to do this um well, uh, the opposition will obviously uh, say all these things. They have been trying to mislead the nation for a long, long time. Uh, as Mr. Javdekar said, uh, and it is correct that in the last couple of sessions, 
because of the very emotional issue of uh, Telangana, uh, uh, there were disruptions, including by our members of parliament and also by some other members of parliament uh, that uh, the BJP is actually cozying up with. No, no, um, so it was a divisive issue, but this is the real, the real stalling of parliament did not happen in the last couple of sessions. The real stalling of parliament has happened in 2011 and 2012. And you can go through newspaper reports, as I do frequently, and you can see how, how uh, vociferously and, uh, you know, BJP stalled parliamentary kind of work time and time again. And it is no doubt that uh, it is because of these kinds of uh, issues, this, these kinds of stalling kind of mechanisms, uh, that the BJP, uh, you know, that this Lok Sabha has been described as one of the least productive. Why you did so not now it's very easy for them to say that you did uh, so many years back. Uh, but, uh, the, the facts on the ground say that uh, these people did not let a lot of the legislative work uh, occur. Uh, can you hear me? Hey, Mr. Sos, let me, let me give you a couple of uh, instances of here. You know, the prevention of bribery of foreign public officials and officials of public international organizations bill 2011. The Lok Sabha, it was introduced in the Lok Sabha on 25th March 2011. Standing Committee report was received on March 29, 2012, a year later. Now we are in February 2014. You had nearly two years to get this bill passed. Now that, you know, it was introduced in the Lok Sabha, the bill has lapsed. Similarly, the right of citizens for time-bound delivery of goods and services and redressal of their grievances bill 2011. Lok Sabha, it was introduced in Lok Sabha on December 28, 2011. It was, the standing committee report was received on August 28, 2011. Again, the bill has not been passed, so it has again lapsed. You know, the, so... Do you say that in the last two years, the government was unable to get these bills passed, which are now being touted as some of the most important legislations which your, which your leader wants it to be passed? You know, isn't, isn't this, isn't, doesn't this show the kind of, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the way in which the government has been able to manage the parliament? Sorry, uh, are you asking me because I was yes, just Yes, Salman, I'm asking, I'm asking you. Okay. All right. So, look, I mean, I think, uh, uh, look, I mean, the facts are in front of you as well. You can do your own research. People uh, sitting at home can actually see exactly how parliament has been disrupted for, for a couple of years now. So, like I said earlier, I don't know if, whether you heard what I was saying about how this parliament has been among the least productive. And, uh, you know, and a large part of the blame goes to the uh, opposition, especially the BJP. Now, we did get several important pieces of legislation done. And yes, thanks to the BJP as well at times when we really had to get, kind of, uh, uh, get some really, really important work done, like the Lokpal bill, uh, where we did get support, or the Telangana bill, where we did get support from the BJP. But for, for these kinds of things, which are actually in the national interest, these kinds of uh, uh, bills uh, on, uh, you know, anti-corruption measures, and there's uh, five or six very important pieces of legislation. We could have gotten it done too, but I think the fact is that these people are playing politics. That's what they care more about than the nation. If they were so interested in uh, anti-corruption measures, uh, then why did they, have, have they provided even a shred of proof, for example, in the Spectrum case? Why do you think rates in India Mobile phone rates in India are among the lowest in the no, world. We're not, we're, let us not because get into the Spectrum mobile roads business. Was no, let us not, provided let's not get into this. Let's if not you get have, into uh, you know, Now, Salman. by the way, who's the, who's the Prime Minister who said that we should auction things in the future? It was no, the no, Salman, 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 we let so us not get into that. Really played both let's not get into that territory what I feel, now. Uh, is going wrong Salman, with the BJP. Salman let's not get into that territory now. Let me. Let me get Anjali in on this. Anjali, you people have been, you know, have been fighting very hard to get some of these legislations passed. And uh, now that, are you comfortable with the fact that these have to be passed in, in, in you know, in the form of ordinances? Well, let me say that I agree with some of the previous speakers. The ordinance route is the least preferred route in a parliamentary democracy. Even for groups like the NCPRI, the National Campaign for People's Right to Information, who have been demanding that the whistleblowers protection bill, the grievance redress bill, which are going to impact every citizen of this country, we've been saying these bills should be passed. Very patiently, these bills have been drafted, developed with 
with people, with people in the parliament, members of parliament, uh, in the standing committee, there have been large scale <coughs> deliberations on these. And we've had a draft in the parliament, which is actually very good on yes. these legislations. The grievance redress bill is a very good draft. And the standing committee report, which was an all party standing committee, deliberated very nicely on it and has given very, very good suggestions. Now, the problem is that despite several sessions of parliament, like you yourself said, this particular bill came in in 2011. Let me give a slight go back a little bit further. 1960s was the Administrative Reforms Committee, which said there should be a grievance redress mechanism. From then, <coughs> the government has been deliberating on it. Citizens groups have been deliberating on it. 2011, there was a sense of house resolution. The parliament promised the people right. of the country that a citizen's charter grievance redress bill will be given to the people. We have been reminding the parliament, every session of parliament sitting at Jantar Mantar, talking to all political parties, saying that this bill should be brought in. Unfortunately, we have seen that the parliament has now adjourned, it's been pro, uh, it's in prorogued, and even now the bill is not here. This bill not being passed actually impacts every citizen. There are people who have to go without their rations, there are people who have to go without their pensions, people who have to go without medicine because when they complain there is no system for redress. So what we are simply saying is that we were really hoping and requesting to every political party that it should be debated and passed by parliament. All political parties, Mr. Jaudekar is here, Mr. Tapan Sen is here, the Congress, everybody said that we support this bill. Why has this bill not been passed? Now the simple reason, Girish, is that the parliament is not functioning. Right. Now to me that is a huge concern because when we say that the ordinances are to be passed only in a state of some emergency, I would say that this is probably the worst scenario in a parliamentary democracy where bills lapse because parliament is just not functioning. So for us, Mr. it's the least preferred route, but we don't think that this bill now, which has lapsed incidentally, yes. should be allowed to just go no. away. Just no. because our parliament is not being able to deliver to the people of this country these basic human rights legislation. Mr. Javdekar, Mr. Javdekar. Mr. Jaudekar, this, yes. Mr. Jaudekar, one thing, one, one, I, you, you can react, I'll, let me tell you, let me say one thing. The fact is that all political parties that, you know, I have also been following these, uh, the, 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 the way these bills have been stalled and they, and I've also been following what people like Anjali and her and uh, similar civil society groups have been putting pressure on all the political parties. All of you agree, but there was there is no sign of you people coming together on bills like this, which which should not which which should be about politics, you know. But politics has been played on everything in the last few sessions that we have witnessed, which is you know which is really tragic. First, let us discuss these two bills. Yes. What is the status today? Lapsed. Whistleblower? No, not. With not the whistleblower. Whistle, one minute. Whistleblower bill, we passed without even government amendments, only to ensure that this doesn't get lapsed. Right. This is a reflection but on government's inefficiency. This, this was... And Anjali, one minute, Anjali knows it. See, the issue was very clear. Whistleblower, nobody was objecting. Right. On the other hand, people gave very proactive amendments. Right. This, uh, the parliamentary standing committee gave on which Government also accepted many recommendations and moved official amendments. Right. So the bill with as amended was to be passed. Right. We were ready to pass as is amended. But then that day we were told if we pass as is amended, that is the right bill, then so perfect bill if it would have passed, it would have lapsed because there is no Lok Sabha right. to go back. So we passed an imperfect law. Right. Knowing fully well just with the intention that shows a willingness of the political parties to walk extra mile just to keep that momentum of the bill A. But it is the essential responsibility of the government. I cannot introduce the bill, you government cannot. bill. There's not yes, doubt. one minute. I moved a private member bill. Yes. To uh, bribery against the bribery of the in the private sector. Right. But that doesn't make difference. That doesn't make official bill. Okay. So official act will come only in the bill and that is the government responsibility. We wanted a 100 day session, they never made it. 
Salman was raising a one minute. Let me also tell you, 11 and 12, the two sessions which were lost, two sessions, not six. Out of six, only two were lost and the, all the opposition parties, including their own supporting party, were demanding JPC on 2G. Yes. The government that. refused adamantly. No, no, and that next, is, that next, is well next session, that is no, well next session that's first day, okay. they accepted. So he is responsible. Okay. So uh, it is a comprehensive me... failure of the government. As far as the public grievance is concerned, our state governments have passed and we are very happy with the experiment. That has brought a co co complete cultural change no, in but the, the problem, office working. No, no, but the but problem the is... problem is Congress members no, no, in the way That is the problem. Congress that, you know, you government, blame them, they Congress blame government... You. No, 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 they can't blame us. They have we were no, not you, in the well. And so, government never listed these bills, which okay. are good for the public. Let that me get let me, let me get Vinod in on this. Vinod, Vinod, how do you look at this? And, uh, and do you think now that the President of India, who will ultimately have to promulgate these ordinances, he is really faced with a situation where he will have to apply his mind on whether these ordinances needs to be passed in, su in such circumstances when the government is on its way out? Well, the final word would be coming from the President and the, if the President returns these ordinances back to the government, I don't think this government will have the courage to send it back to him again. But I wonder whether that will happen. These are legislations for which there have been huge demands. Yes, of course, they are imperfect because they have not been adequately debated. But I want to raise a, broad, raise a broader issue. Yes. I wonder whether it is prudent to uh, introduce such legislations in the lower house, uh, uh, you know, even if, even when the uh, a given session or give, a given parliament is in its early stages. I think such bills on which there is a logjam or, or on which, uh, you know, political parties are trying to uh, rob the ruling party of brownie points, of talking points, they should be introduced in the upper house so that they don't lapse for the simple reason, like the way the women's reservation bill was uh, introduced in the upper house. Yeah. And had these bills been pending in the upper house, I think the legitimacy of the ordinance would have been greater for the simple reason that these houses, uh, this, uh, the, the bills in the, the upper house would have remained on the legislative agenda. Right. Now, in this case, it seems that the outgoing government is forcing a legislative agenda on the new house. Right. So, that is the point of propriety on which there is some debate. Absolutely. You see, you get my point. Absolutely. So, this is where I think collectively all political parties must come to a decision. I accuse all of them of failure to pass these legislations. Yes, we can go into the nitty-gritty. Primary responsibility is that of the government to bring the business before the house. But it takes two to tango. Absolutely. So the opposition, unless there is cooperation by the opposition, unless the opposition is proactively involved, you know, even the Telangana legislation, which has been passed, is an imperfect resignation. Absolutely. Because there is a constitutional issue involved there. But it was decided that, okay, let's ignore it, let's pass this, because this is important. So political parties are politically expedient, and they do everything for votes. And these legislations are going to decide votes. So if the, if the ordinance is passed and the president gives the approval, I don't think anybody will oppose it. But grave questions shall remain about their propriety. Grave questions shall remain whether we are actually devaluing parliamentary democracy by getting legislations passed outside the sphere of parliament and then leaving it to the new house to take a view on it. Absolutely. And I do not know. Uh, whether the new house will pass it or not. Yeah, that is because the, there, then the stalling will be done uh, by the opposition, the then current opposition. You know. Right, right. Yes, and I'll come to you, Salman. Before that, Anjali wants. Anjali, you want to react? You want to say something on this? No. I, then I'll, I'll, I'll let me go to Salman and I'll come back to you. Salman, yes. Girish, I am also here. No, I was. I'll, I'll come to you, Tapan. Uh, Salman way, just, wanted to react. Because, I'll come to you. But yes. I, I, on, on these, I, I want to. Uh, I, can, uh, I, I want to raise the basic issues. Yes, yeah, please, Salman. Let's Tapan finish. I'll come back to you. Yes, yes, Tapan. Actually, I, I want to make one truth. One thing is that I question the real intention about behind this the the whole thing that has happened. Mr. Salman told there are real stalling, and I don't know whether 
stalling has got a definition <laughs> that whether real stalling and unreal stalling. Practically last four sessions yes. were stalled by the ruling party or their allies or their those political oh. groups who bailed out ruling party on all crucial occasion. They are the groups who are stalling this house. Ruling party has to own the responsibility. Secondly, the question of intention arises, what are the bill you are listing, Girish? Yes. You just go through the business, list of business during last four sessions. How many days those bills were listed for business? How many days? And that is the prime responsibility of the ruling side. In the business advisory committee, as per their proposition, the list of business, legislative business was prepared. How many days somebody should go and scrutinize those list of business of both the house, Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha are available in website. You please go through it. How many days it has been listed? And on those days, who are the persons who stalled the house? And for what reasons? Where there are issues, where there are class interests involved, like banking privatization, like pension uh, regulatory authority bill, they go out of the way and the bill got passed. When the government and the principal opposition join hands. Right. Okay. So, well, <laughs> where there are corporate business interests, where there are commercial interests of the big business houses, all those controversial issues, Mia Bibi Ek Ho Jata Hai, Pass Ho Jata Hai. Okay. So, the, and these basic people issues, I, on that all kinds of politics I are I take your point, I take your so point. that I is like the issues. I, like I take your point, Tapan. Vinod, I'll come to you. Salman, yes, please. Salman, source. Now you... Now you please react. On, on both points. I mean, yes. So let, me, let me just, yes. By the way, I mean, the last, yes, the last uh, several sessions were uh, 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 disturbed by mem you know, members, including of the Congress party. But please remember that this Telangana, Telangana is not a regular kind of issue. It is a very emotional issue. And we ourselves do not want uh, the House to be disturbed. We wanted this thing, uh, this bill to be passed. It wasn't as if we didn't want it to be passed. We wanted it to be passed. And by the way, it is uh, not correct to state that, oh, these two parties get together only when uh, the commercial interests are uh, kind of at hand. We have to remember that the Food Security Act was passed and the Land Reforms Act was passed and many, and many people in the corporate sector were not very happy. We keep getting slammed by everybody about how we are uh, subsidizing everything and this thing and that thing. So the, those are not commercial interests, by the way. Now, on the issue of uh, ordinance and uh, no, is this uh, proper to do it right now, no, no, I would suggest the following. Yes. No, please, let me just finish. Okay. Let me finish on the issue of ordinances. Okay. okay. The thing is that, as, as I think Ms. Uh, Ms. Bhardwaj also said, and I don't, uh, uh, because my connection wasn't good, I don't know what Mr. Javdekar said, but this, these uh, types of legislation, say the grievance redressal or the whistleblower, I think may, there is political consensus that we need these things to be done. I don't see how the next parliament is going to say we're not going to do these bills. So if, if right now, I, well, I would kind of say to the BJP and other political parties, let us all agree that we'll send this, these things for an ordinance, Get the ordinance done, and then the next uh, uh, parliament takes that it is, that What's is the, the point. With that? The point which I mean, nobody, you have made is important. Is anyone right now? Is, it, no, is no, there the anyone? The point you have made is important. Uh, is anyone right now going to say that. that let's not do these things? No, no. I'll come back to that. You have made an important point. Yes, Vinod. Very quickly before I go to Anjali, Vinod. Before me, me, me. Yes, yes. I'll come to you, Mr. Yeah, Jawadekar. Yes, I'm. I'm quite. You know. Uh, I mean, I at times I really marvel at the hypocrisy of some of the political parties. You know. They take a very, you know, uh, you know, they're, uh, they're you know, very indignant about what's happening around them. Then this is self-righteous indignation. You know, if you look at the Janlok Pal bill, which has been passed by our parliament, this bill treats, gives a certain time frame and the liberty to the state governments to have lokayuktas loka of their liking. Right. And now we see in Karnataka and in Gujarat, what kind of lokayuktas have come? Now, when it comes to fighting corruption at the level where they are ruling, some of the regional parties, they don't want, they want to have a lokayukta of their liking. And they think that there should not be a universal law applied against corruption across the country. Okay. Uh, they think that I this think is a federal question. I mean, it's not a law and order issue that it's a federal question. Right, Vinod. Is fighting corruption Vinod, I think, a law and order issue? No, no. Vinod, I think I, I got, I, your point is well taken. Yes, Anjali. Well, 
let me first say that I think the objective data is there for everybody to see. The 15th Lok Sabha has been one of the worst, in fact, the worst performing, the worst, the the worst. worst performing uh, Lok Sabha in the history of our independent nation. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, to, I agree with uh, what has been said earlier, that where there is political will, whether it is the uh, whistleblowers protection law or the food security law, yes, we have seen that parties have come together, they have risen above party lines and they have passed some significant legislations. Now what we needed was much more of that right. because any Lok Sabha has several human rights, other important legislations which need to be passed. Of course some of these got passed but there are many that haven't and including bills like the grievance redress which have now fallen by the wayside. We know what it takes to get a bill back into legislative Absolutely. business. We have Something seen like that. the land acquisition law, once it lapsed, it took us more than three years to Absolutely. get it back into and the agenda. look at the state of and women's, women's, women's e reservation. The only itself. one little other thing which I want to say is that in the ordinance route again, uh, the struggle for people like us is not going to end with an ordinance. What we really believe is that the parliament must debate this and, and get and, proper and amendments. Like Mr. Jaudekar said, right now the whistleblower's bill, because it was taken up at the last minute in the parliament literally, it has gone through but with serious shortcomings. With serious, very serious short, yes. Uh, yes. Yes, Mr. Jaudekar, quickly. Uh, just two sentences. Yes. One is that ordinance rule to be taken is not the prerogative of the opposition party. It's not. Certainly ruling not. Ruling party, one minute, ruling party, instead of asking us something, should really take view of, informal view of the president, because he has to give assent. Otherwise, you will be showing that you have done it, but president has returned, and that's the issue. So okay. you have to be a little political intelligent and do the due diligence I'm sure. before you promulgate it. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure. The, 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 Lord, Salman says, I have one question, you can react, but before that I have one question. Do you think that the government is now going through the process of consulting the opposition parties also? Because as, as Vinod Sharma rightly pointed out, there is always a danger that the next parliament under a, under a new government, if there is a new government under, in the next parliament, these <coughs> bills can lapse, these bills can, uh, can uh, you know, face problems. So don't you think that it is essential that the government even consults the opposition parties even at this stage before promulgating an ordinance? Apart from, of course, as Javdekar suggests, you know, uh, informally think, consulting the president. Frankly, I think not, not, not just not just consultations, but actually uh, the the leader of the opposition could uh, go along uh, uh, with the, the Congress representative, meet the president <coughs> informally, and say this is something that all of us would want to do anyway. I Give us a bridge from here to the next mockery, and then we'll take it you know, so, you know your your suggestion. I, I mean, your good intention suggestion is well taken. But you know, in this kind of a political atmosphere, we don't know whether that that no, no, president will not allow this meeting. <laughs> okay. You must understand. But, you know, what is, what, what, you want to no, take informal consultation with the president. How you can oppose? How can you be in opposition? I don't think the president would say it no. It is the ruling okay. party and the president. Okay, okay. Tapan, the last word. Last word. If the president knew that the, uh, the opposition is with with the ruling party, it'd be okay. This okay. is for the people of the country. One second, Tapan. Last words to you very quickly. Uh, yes, we same thing. It is all depends on the real political intention. Okay, on I the real political. I can cite an example. Women reservation bill was passed by Rajya Sabha in 2011. Correct. And, okay. and thereafter, it was never listed in the Lok Sabha. Absolutely. So and still, and now you will be, if you come with an ordinance, is it not a hypocrisy? Yeah, no. But <laughs> after all, we are being governed limit. by hypocrites. We have to accept that. Let us okay. go ahead with that. Vinod, Vinod, Vinod pointed it out earlier. And, you know, Look I, at I the suppose... fate of the GST. <laughs> I suppose it applies to all political parties. And thanks. also, I think we are you completely know, also the direct tax code. Okay, we know Modi is now promising that correct. he will have it done. We know, we, we know. did not help. Did not help when it was sought to be done after Chidambaram mooted it. Okay, we know we are completely out of time. We are completely run out of time. Madhya Pradesh we will hold. It. Okay, we know we are completely run out of time. We will wait and yeah. watch. Today the cabinet was supposed to take a decision. It has been deferred. We will wait and see when the when and if the cabinet will take it up and you know suggest this uh, ordinances to the president 
But as everybody here pointed out, it is not something which is a very happy situation to be promulgating ordinances, but some of these ordinances may become inevitable and desirable. Thanks to all my guests, uh, Mr. Prakash Javdekar, Salman Sos, uh, Tapan Sen, Vinod Sharma and Anjali Bharadwaj. Please keep watching. We will come back with another issue in the big picture at the same time on Monday. Meanwhile, have a great weekend.